The head coaches are certainly a part of our story. Terry Donahue at UCLA and Dick Tomey, first year at Arizona. Tomey served as Terry's defensive coordinator in his first year as head coach at UCLA back in 1976. And actually, they go back farther than that. Well, they do. Dick Tomey has been uh, an assistant at UCLA. He was there for six years as an, an assistant. Prior to that, he was at Kansas, and the reason he got to Kansas was because of the simple fact that Terry Downey, who put in a good word for Dick Tomey, and Kansas hired him. Now, Tomey likes the unusual, and he runs a combination offense this year of the wishbone and the run and shoot. I think most football fans have heard or seen the wishbone, but may not be familiar with the run and shoot. What are the differences between the two? Well, the, the wishbone, as we go to it, and you to get a good shot of it right here, it's basically a run offense-oriented program. The wishbone will have one wide receiver, and normally a tight end, they'll have a fullback as you see, designated with the F, and two halfbacks. Now, when we go to the run and shoot, what will happen is we'll take that other tight end, move him to the outside, so you've got two outside receivers. We'll take that A and B back, as they are now called in the run and shoot. We'll put them right up on the hips of the offensive tackle, and now we have the fullback designated as the Y back. And you may wonder, why is it A, B, and Y? So that the quarterback in the huddle can designate specific pass routes to each individual back. And to simplify it, why fullback A and B running backs? A man responsible for running this Arizona offense, quarterback Bobby Waters. Bobby Waters, outstanding youngster, great ball handler, 305 yards, total yards, leads the Wildcats this season. A transfer in from SMU. Again, loves to run the bone. He loves to run and shoot. A little dump off screen pass here to Alonzo Washington, who will go 94 yards for a touchdown for the University of Arizona. A setting a school record now this is one of the advantages that you have playing the run and shoot and the wishbone you can continually confuse the defense the problem defensively is you're so spread out that it's difficult at all times to cover everybody the UCLA defense certainly will be tested today. They got tested by Nebraska. This will probably be their second big test of 1987. I think the highlight for Terry Donahue last weekend against Fresno State was the fact that Gaston Green, his star tailback, had a 100-yard game again. Well, he's very, very happy about that. And they need Gaston Green. 22 carries for 115 yards and one touchdown last week. He is the main man in their offense. He's the cog in that wheel. Nine out of ten games of the last ten games over 100 yards. He does so many things well for the Bruins. An exceptional runner, as we've already noted. He's ready to move into the number two spot on the all-time rushing list for the Bruins. He's got to get the ball in his hands 25 to 30 times today. Gaston Green already has scored five touchdowns here in 1987. When you analyze the strength of Arizona against UCLA, who comes out on top? Well, we took some time this week, and we put together a chart here, a strength comparison chart. Running offense is no question. The bone has the advantage here. We've got to go with the University of Arizona. Passing offense, undoubtedly we have got to stick with the UCLA Bruins. Rushing defense, a great job last week. Again, we go back to the UCLA Bruins. Passing defense, great athletes in that secondary. Again, let's go to the UCLA Bruins. Special teams with Gary Costin, the All-American sophomore kicker. We've got to go back to the University of Arizona. And from an experience standpoint, the number of good athletes that UCLA has, we're going to go back to the column with UCLA. Okay, so the run for the Roses begins for both UCLA and Arizona. We're delighted you have joined us. We'll have the opening kickoff for you from the Rose Bowl right after these messages. the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, the Pacific 10 opener between UCLA and Arizona. It's a gorgeous day. The temperature is 79 degrees, 55 percent humidity, a slight wind from the southwest at four miles per hour. The officials for today's Pac-10 opener, Bill Richardson is the referee and the rest of his outstanding crew. The flip of the coin has been won by Arizona. Terry Donahue in his 12th season as head coach at UCLA. Arizona deferred until the second half, so they will be kicking off the Donahue's Bruins. Terry Donahue played at UCLA as a defensive lineman in the mid-60s and has been so successful. Dick Tomey, after 10 years at Hawaii and his first year as head coach at Arizona, taking over for Larry Smith, who now is over at USC. Gary Costin set to kick off for Arizona. He's from Santa Ana, California.
Gaston Green and Brian Brown deep for UCLA. Green in the end zone, and Brown says, Captain, put the knee down. Let's start from the 20-yard line. So UCLA will have the football first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Troy Aikman, starting at quarterback, is 29 of 46 for 520 yards. One touchdown. He connected with Willie Anderson the last weekend against Fresno State. Aikman out of Henrietta, Oklahoma. 6'3 and a half, 217. Lone remaining back, Gaston Green. He gets the pitch. On a nice second effort, he gets up to the 23-yard line. Pushed out of bounds by Chuck Cecil and Darrell Jones. And you'll hear Cecil's name all day long. He's their free safety, and he is a good one. Offensively, Green at tailback, Barr at fullback, Anderson at wide receiver, Craig at flanker, and Arbuckle starting at tight end. Offensive line, Warnick, Meyer, Cornish, Kidder, and Big Dave Richards. Second down and six for UCLA. Barr and Green in the backfield behind Aikman. UCLA out of the eye formation. Green cuts inside and picks up good yardage up to the 29-yard line. Brought down by Jerry Beasley, George Hinkle also in on the stop. Hinkle, Wells, and Gaddis up front defensively for the Wildcats. Linebackers, Singleton and Singleton. Kevin and Chris, they're twins outside. Custer and Beasley inside. In the secondary, Jones and Burden, the cornerbacks. DeVoe at strong safety. Chuck Cecil at free safety. Third and one for UCLA from their own 29-yard line. Aikman, audibleizing. Gaston Green, and he is held short of the first down. Dana Wells, Reggie Gaddis, along with Jerry Beasley, all in on the stop for Arizona. So that'll bring up a fourth and one, and the UCLA punting team takes the field. That's going to make the Wildcats feel very, very good coming out of the ball game first quarter, holding them on downs, forcing them to punt on their first possession. Harold Barcade averaging 41.4. Derek Jones, the deep man, he just did get it off. Jones at his 33. And he gets up to the 37 or 38 yard line. And he was brought down by David Keating of UCLA. Bobby Waters, the quarterback for Arizona. Barcade got 39 yards on that punt. Three-yard return for Hill. Waters, 11 of 21, 231 yards. Two touchdown passes. Both came last weekend in the first half against New Mexico. He suffered a hip pointer, missed the second half, but he's out there today. In motion, that's Darrell Lewis to the near side. And he's throwing incomplete intended for Reggie McGill, and he couldn't quite hold on to it. Jeff Gambrin was in on the play for UCLA. The rest of the offense for the Wildcats. McGill at the A-back, or running back. Darrell Lewis, the other running back. Charles Webb at fullback. Fairholm the split in. Derek Hill at flanker. The offensive line, Reinhardt, McKinney, Joe Toppelmeyer, the center, Woods, and Tom Lynch. Second and 10 from the Arizona 38-yard line. No score, 12.48 remaining, first quarter. On the option, Charles Webb, the fullback, gets the call. He crosses the 40, gets up to the 41 or 42-yard line. Defensively, the Bruins up front. Glasser, Toomey, the Norris guard, and Jim Waller at right tackle. The outside linebackers, Lake and Jackson inside. Chance Johnson and Ken Norton in the secondary. Henley, Price, Allen Dial, and Jeff Cameron at free safety for the injured James Washington, who is missing his second consecutive game. For Arizona, third and six from their own 42-yard line. Well, we've seen some of the run-and-shoot formation already. Uh, what we did talk about with the, uh, in the pregame during the opening is that when you see that run-and-shoot and those guys come out and line up on the hips of the offensive tackle, a lot of times what uh, Waters will do is take that snap from center and hit them directly in an up stance right by the tackle or hit them on a little quick look-in. 
not allowing the secondary or the defense of UCLA to try and get set. And they come out in the run and shoot. In motion comes Darrell Lewis. Waters flips it immediately to McGill. A nice catch, and he is dropped at the 48-yard line. Jeff Damron was the man who made the stop for UCLA. Damron out of Irvine, California, a senior. There's no specific drop back by the quarterback on this. He just takes the ball from the center from Topelmeyer and then on his way back with his first step, he'll just throw that ball in there and hit that wide receiver who's the wide receiver. He's actually back, and there he is right there, Reggie McGill. He's out of Phoenix. He's a freshman, 5'9", 191. A first down for Arizona at their own 49-yard line, and the handoff goes to the fullback, Charles Webb, and he's dead at the UCLA 45-yard line. Chance Johnson made the stop. Johnson out of Compton, California, 6'1", 219-pound junior. As you look at Webb, he did not start seven carries for 32 yards so far this year. He did not start last week, but he has started five of the last six games in 86, so he's accustomed to being a first stringer back there. Picked up six, second and four from the UCLA 45-yard line. No score. A little over 11 minutes to play. First quarter of action. McGill in motion, and he gets the flip on the option. trip from Tempe, enjoying that run, an 18-yard camper. Reggie McGill, there he is right there, number eight, a good job by Waters as he's going down to put that ball out, puts a good move, it looks like an Allen Dial jumps in behind his wide receiver there to try to pick up a block. Derek Tennell does an excellent job of getting a big first down for the Wildcats. First and ten for Arizona at the UCLA 26-yard line. Lewis again in motion. Webb. Good running room up the middle, and he's down at his 20-yard line. Tackle was made by Eric Turner and Jim Waller for the Bruins. Eric Turner in a strong safety. He's from Ventura. He's a redshirt freshman, 6'1", 194 pounds. Waller, the junior from San Jose, 6'4 and a half, 258. A game of second, uh, seven. It'll be second and three from the 20-yard line. No score. 10.47 left. First quarter. Charles Webb leaps to the 15-yard line. Chance Johnson made the stop for UCLA. Helped out by Ken Norton. Nice job by the right guard, Rob Woods and Tom Lynch, the right tackle, kicking out on Jeff Glasser and Chance Johnson, the inside linebacker. When Waters, as a quarterback, sees that, he'll just give that ball to that big fullback, Charles Webb, and take what he can get right now. Arizona on the move, first and ten at the UCLA 15-yard line. Webb again, and he picks up a couple of more yards. A trio of Bruins get on the stop, led by Chance Johnson. Kim Norton and Jeff Glasser also there for UCLA. Wildcats having a problem the first two games of 1987 in their turnover department. They're minus five in the turnovers, which means they have given the ball up five more times than they have received it. A big part of that is due to six fumbles, and uh, hopefully that that will not occur today. So far in this drive, they've handled the ball extremely well. John Brandom into the game on the offensive line for Arizona, second and eight from the 13. Webb again, workhorse, and he picks up maybe a yard. Terry Toomey was there, the man who made the primary tackle, Big Jim Waller. There's some interesting battles going along the front line. One of them, Joe Toffelmeyer, the All-American center for the University of Arizona against Terry Toomey. From a size standpoint, as you look right there at UCLA's defense, allowing only 46.3 yards rushing per game, which is outstanding. Oh, yeah. One of them. the throw 11, it's third and six for Arizona. Out of the run and shoot. Webb, and this time, UCLA nails him for a loss. Ken Norton led the charge for the Bruins. Watch it again. Now the Bruins are going to be coming in from that left side do an outstanding job of stacking up the blockers. Norton sidesteps the block of the right guard. Rob Woods and comes in and makes a tackle. Heck of a job by Ken Norton. Gary Costin to attempt a 28-yard field goal. He's a good one. The kick is up. It's good. Come out on the 
field with eight minutes and 44 seconds remaining first quarter. Our score, Arizona three, UCLA nothing. We'll be back with more action from the Rose Bowl here in Pasadena, California, right after this. Arizona leading UCLA three to nothing. The head coach of the Wildcats, Dick Tomey, as we mentioned at the outside, has some old ties to the UCLA Bruins. He was a defensive coordinator in 1976. How does he feel playing UCLA in this one? Well, I have a lot of friends at UCLA, and, and I and I was at UCLA a long time. I've been a, somebody that's followed UCLA. I think UCLA has a, a great program. I think Coach Donnie has done it. Besides being a friend, he's done one of the best jobs in the country of coaching football, and I have people on their staff I've worked with, and players I've coached from UCLA over the years, so I have a lot of very good friends at UCLA, but... Cast the screen from his own seven-yard line, and he is picked up at the 17-yard line. A nice play. Like Paul Kasprick on the tackle came down and made the tackle for the Wildcats, hustling down there, does a good job on special teams for the U of A. a clipping penalty against UCLA. So the Bruins will have the ball farther back in their own territory. Here's the official rule. It'll be first and ten for UCLA. The ball is at their own eight-yard line. UCLA rushing 197.3 and passing 196.7. So Terry Donahue, who does not take any opponent lightly, first series of down, the Bruins came out with two tight ends, and it looks like they're back again with the, both tight ends. In motion, Charles Arbuckle. Gaston Green gets the football, and he crosses the 10 up to the 11-yard line. He was brought down there by Reggie Gaddis of Arizona. Gaddis from Pomona is 6'3", 259 pounds, and a sophomore. Saw limited action last year. Gaston Green moving up the all-time rushing chart here at UCLA behind McNeil and Wendell Tyler. He's in pretty good company. A couple of great ones, no question of it. Second and seven from the 11 for the Bruins. Play action, complete to Willie Anderson. And he fumbles the football, recovered by Arizona's Jerry Beasley at the Bruin 27-yard line. Play action pass on the part of the Bruins. Anderson comes in on a quick slant. Aikman makes to his fullback, drops back, now he's going to hit Anderson on a slant. Watches it all the way in, makes a nice catch. He gets hit here by Darrell Jones. Let's see when he starts to lose the ball. Yep, the ball is lost on his way down, and it's caused to be lost by number six, Chuck Cecil, the all pac 10 and All-American free safety for Arizona. That's not a surprise. He loves to hit. He is an outstanding football player, and they love him at Arizona. There's Beasley, big number 43, outstanding inside linebacker for Arizona. Art Greathouse in motion, play action, and David Andrews has the football, and he also has a touchdown. A 27-yard passing play from Waters to David Eldridge, and the Wildcats have surprised the Bruins and are leading 9 to nothing. Tell you why it doesn't surprise me because, again, the bone and the running shoot are such fast-acting plays. Waters will take it, fake it to his fullback, which has been successful all day. And there he goes right there to Eldridge, right in the scene, makes a tremendous move on a UCLA defensive back and right on into the end zone. A big, quick hitter for the Wildcats. Kerry Costa now will attempt the PAT. Tim Shanahan will snap the ball. Brett Holly to hold. It's good. Seven minutes and 56 seconds remaining here in the first quarter, and the University of Arizona is leading UCLA 10 to nothing. Arizona jumping off to a quick 10-0 lead over UCLA, and you have to wonder if head coach Terry Donahue is thinking deja vu. You might recall last year at halftime, 
Arizona led UCLA 18 to nothing, and UCLA came from behind to win it. But now they're down 10 nothing. Costin puts the foot into it. Green from a yard deep. He's going to run it out. is tackled by Kevin Singleton inside the 15-yard line. So again, Arizona doing a great job on kick coverage. They've always been noted for their special teams, and particularly when Larry Smith has been down there the last few years, did a great job with the special teams. And believe me, Dick Tomey is not going to allow that to diminish in any way. Always a superb special teams team it is the University of Arizona. Troy Aikman now will see what he can do with the UCLA offense. First and 10 from their own 14. It's 10-0. Arizona, under eight minutes to play, first quarter. Far at fullback. Green at tailback. Gaston Green, and he is caught way back for a loss. Dana Wells was there. Dana Wells just handled Frank Cornish, the offensive center. Dana Wells is the nose guard. Watch him push Frank Cornish aside. He'll be coming from the right side. You'll see him right there. Excellent job. Green wants to cut back, but by the time he has a chance, when he looks up, and there he is, big number 99. He is big. Mike Farr into the ball game for Willie Anderson. Far wide right. Paco Craig, wide left. Green in the slot left. Aikman. Throwing complete to far, that he is pushed out of bounds at the 19-yard line by Darrell Jones. Jones, the left cornerback for Arizona. He's out of San Bernardino, a sophomore, 5'10", 178 pounds. So Mike Farr with his first reception of the day. Arizona has taken UCLA out of their game plan. It was obvious in the first two series that they wanted to try and run against U of A. They figured they could go ahead and run against them. But with the, uh, the interception that, uh, the, and fumble, or the fumble, I should say, that was covered by U of A, has taken that out of their game plan. Third and five from the 19. Play action. Aikman has plenty of time, and he puts it up the middle far. And far gets up to the 30-yard line. He is tackled by James DeVoe. The ball is strong safety. He, too, is from San Bernardino. He's a junior. A little play action. You're going to fake it to Gas and Green on a misdirection. Aikman's going to roll out. He's got his receiver in the flat out there, which he gets a nice job of getting the ball to him real quick. Mel Farr, the ball who was a basic cornerback last year, is now being at the strong safety position for the Cats. First and 10 from the 30 for the Bruins. Again, play action. Aikman now is going to run with the football, and he gets good yardage, and he fumbles the ball. I believe Arizona got it. That's right. The Wildcats have recovered their second fumble of the first quarter. And the man to get the football, Blake Custer, to the disgust of UCLA head coach Terry Donahue. Well, that's two big uh, no-nos in a row. Aikman's back looking downfield for his receivers. He gets a little bit of pass rush on the left side of the Arizona line. Now let's watch the ball and see exactly when he loses it right there. Again, it's stripped. And it looks like it may have been that man Cecil again who comes up without trying to tackle the ball carrier. Tries to strip that ball from the runner and does a good job of it. So UCLA has copped it up twice in Arizona now. We'll see if they can capitalize a second time. Play action. Waters with plenty of time. And he's going long. Out of bounds at the 29 yard line. So Waters throws the interception, and the pride of Long Beach, Dennis Price, picked it off nicely. Waters just waiting a little bit too long before he tries to get that ball down the field, and by the time he does, it allows Dennis Price to react, get himself in position, step up in front of the receiver, make the interception, and a very nice return back upfield. There's a young man from Long Beach Poly, Dennis Price, 6'1", 173-pound senior. First and 10 for the Bruins at their own 29-yard line. Arbuckle in motion. Gaston Green. Green is down at the 31-yard line. Tackled there by Kevin Singleton and helped out by Brad Hinkey. You'll hear the name Singleton probably a lot today, not because there's one guy all over the field, but the simple fact is that there are two of them. They're twins. They both play the outside linebacker position. Second and nine for the Bruins. 10-0 Arizona. Just under six minutes to play. First quarter. Green. Green 
Green gets up to the 34-yard line. He was hit and brought down by Blake Custer, the inside linebacker from El Paso, Texas. He's a senior. He was a starter three years ago, and then he hurt a knee, and he was out the rest of that campaign. Mike Farr into the ball game for the Bruins, and he is sent wide right. Paco Craig, wide left. Third and five from the 34, and now Green goes in motion, far side. Aikman, good protection, and Farr has another reception, this time at the 45-yard line. Darrell Jones covering the pass good for 10 yards and a UCLA first down. Darrell Jones, the left corner for the Cats, is going to definitely allow those receivers to all the room that they need. And uh, why not take advantage of it? And that's what, exactly what Aikman is doing. He's been perfect. 48 yards, four for four. Troy sends Willie Flipper Anderson wide left. in motion. Picker tight in on the left side and Gaston Green gets it. He's going to throw it. Looking for Anderson, but he overshoots his man and back there covering Chuck Cecil. Cecil had that play read uh, pretty good. We thought there may be a little razzle-dazzle by UCLA and they showed it awful early so far in today's ball game with Green, a natural left-hander, so he's going to his natural side. Laid that ball on a corner out to Anderson, but Chuck Cecil, the free safety, was not full. He was in great position. Arizona, with their 10 points, have scored in 172 consecutive games. That's the second longest current streak in the nation. UCLA has the top at 184 straight. Second and 10 from the 44 for UCLA. Gaston Green, far leading the way. He gets outside, 45, and he is finally dropped down at the 36, 37-yard line of Arizona. Chuck Cecil, finally. Brought him down, out of bounds, a 19-yard run by Gaston Green. A quick pitch to Green from Aikman. He gets outside, superb blocking by the left side of that line. Warnick and, and Rick Meyer, the left guard and left tackle. Green turns it upfield, tries to cut it in behind his block. From Looked like it was Willie Anderson, but finally knocked out of bounds by the Wildcats. Eric Ball into the game now for UCLA. UCLA now out of the shotgun. Inside handoff to Ball, and there is one tackler, and he gets inside the 35-yard line, down at the 34. Blake Custer and Chuck Cecil combine on the stop for the Wildcats. Number six, Chuck Cecil, he is quite a story. He was a walk-on back in 1983, and now he's an All-America candidate. Dick Tomey said of Cecil, he is a great player. What he does on film is maybe secondary to what he does for the squad as an, as an example and as a leader. Second and seven. Aikman now getting rushed, and he is sacked at the 40-yard line. Dana Wells was back there, and he was helped out by Chris Singleton. There's been one rap on the defensive line for the Arizona Wildcats. It's the fact that the down linemen do not come up with enough sacks. But so far today, Wells has had an outstanding day with two sacks himself. A concern to Terry Donahue watches from the UCLA sideline. It's 10-0 Arizona, under four minutes to play here in the first quarter at the Rose Bowl. Third and 12 for the Bruins at the Arizona 39. Aikman moving to his left, getting rushed. Now he gets a great block, and he's got some running room, and he is inside the 30 down at the 29-yard line. Blake Custer, along with Jerry Beasley, finally got to Aikman. It's going to be a fourth and two, and Donnie is not going to fool around. He will send his field goal specialist, Alfredo Velasco, out of the field. Well, the crowd kind of wants Donahue to go, but that would be a stupid move at this juncture of the ball game with three minutes left to go in the first quarter. You don't want to take away the scoring opportunity. This will be a 46-yard attempt for Alfredo Velasco out of the hold of Kurt Maggio. Didn't have the distance. Short. So Velasco misses the 46-yard field goal attempt. That stops the clock with two minutes and 54 seconds left. First quarter here at the Rose Bowl in the Pac-10 opener. And it's been all Arizona thus far.
Arizona leading UCLA 10-0 with 2.54 remaining first quarter. When you talk about UCLA and Arizona, both schools have a, an SMU connection. Bobby Waters and Kevin McKinney for the Wildcats. Richards and Hummel came over from SMU to UCLA. First and 10 Arizona from their own 29-yard line. Out of the run and shoot formation. Lewis and now McGill goes in motion on the option. Waters keeps it and he gets good yardage up to the 38-yard line. Brought down unassisted by Ken Norton. Another example of what you and I were talking about earlier about stretching that defense. Man, that defense, especially those linebackers and corners, is very, very important to come up and fill. And when that doesn't happen, man, the field just looks so wide open as it, as it did on that last play. Second and one. Gain of nine, it'll be second and one from the 38-yard line. Charles Webb going for the first down. It will be very, very close. Jim Waller, Melvin Jackson, be on the stop for UCLA. A nice job by Terry Toomey at the nose tackle of the Bruins, who got into the backfield as Waters was handing the ball off. But again, when you go to that bone, that wishbone, or run and shoot, the first man you always take it to is that fullback, and he's a hard man to stop. UCLA did a beautiful job, and it's third and one from the 38. From the run and shoot, Jeff Fairholm wide left. So Water is on a quarterback keeper. And again, we have an official's timeout. The Cats came up and ran it on a quick count on that last play. They just settled up in there behind your offensive center. Did Bobby Waters get in behind your All-American center, Joe Toppelmeyer? Put your hands on his behind, make a sound, and away you go. Dick Tully has to be pleased with the way things are going thus far. First and 10, Arizona from their own 39-yard line, and they lead it 10-zip. Webb. Also under the game now for Arizona, number 20, Alonzo Washington. He's the man who caught that 94-yard touchdown pass last weekend in the first half versus New Mexico. They didn't find out until Monday that he had broken his hand. Second and seven for Arizona from their own 42-yard line. On the keeper, Waters, and he is hit hard and brought down at penalty flags at the 43-yard line. We may have a face mask penalty on Melvin Jackson, the right outside linebacker for UCLA. He played it very, very well, but then when Waters faked the pitch out, cut back up, cut back up inside, he reached out and grabbed it. Let's see if we can find Melvin Jackson, reach out and grab Bobby Waters' face mask. There's Jackson on the right. He's in good position to cover both, and right there you see it. Good shot by our camera. An excellent job. No question about it, a face mask penalty. Melvin matted himself. Well, he is. You're right, Jeff. But there's not a whole heck of a lot you can do with the case. At that point in time, when that ball carrier is going by, you just reach out and grab whatever is available. So Terry Donahue watches that penalty. He hurt his ball club as Arizona now is at the Bruin 42-yard line, first and 10. Under a minute to play, 10-0 Arizona here in the first quarter. Great house in motion. And on the reverse is Derek Hill. He's got some room. He's got blocking. He's inside the 30, brought down at the 28-yard line by Ken Norton. A 15-yard run by Derek Hill. Derek Hill has so much big play potential for the Wildcats. He'll be coming from the left to the right across your screen. You fake it into the fullback. Waters comes down the line of scrimmage, and there he is, 82. He's going to get a good block from number 60, Jeff Reinhardt, on a field back block. Gets back up into the secondary. Another super block by one of the Arizona Wildcats. Takes it out of bounds. First and 10, Arizona from the UCLA 27-yard line. Alonzo Washington gets up to the 25-yard line for Arizona. Jim Waller and Terry Toomey, a couple of the down linemen defensively, get on the stop for the Bruins. He talked about Alonzo Washington earlier breaking a bone in the back of his hand. He's nicknamed Zoe, and they now call him Zoe J because of his long 94-yard touchdown reception last week. So he's had quite a season. He's now known as Zoe J. Washington. There is the gun ending the first quarter of action here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. At the end of the first quarter, it's Arizona leading UCLA 10-0.
back after this. The first quarter stats, Arizona, a couple of more first downs in UCLA. They had 79 yards rushing compared to the Bruins' 46. The Bruins had 48 passing compared to 33 for the Wildcats. Total yards again, Arizona 112 to 94 for UCLA. Two turnovers for UCLA. One cost them a score. One for Arizona, and Arizona has had the football. More time than UCLA, and they lead it 10-0 over the Bruins. So far in the first quarter, Arizona doing a great job of ball handling. Again, we've mentioned at the outset of the game, a little concerned maybe with the execution on the part of the Wildcats, but doing a super job so far. Our great house in the slot right side. Fairholm wide left. David Eldridge in motion. And now trying to get it to Eldridge. Waters has to eat the football as he is sacked. Back at the 29-yard line. First man to hit him, Carnell Lake. The key to this is what's the high tackle that Carnell Lake puts on Bobby Waters. Waters wants to get rid of the ball right there. He's trying to get it up there. Carnell puts that helmet right up there on his shoulder pads and does not allow him to extend those arms and flick that ball out to his trailing back. Very well played by Carnell Lake. Lake has had just a tremendous season. It's third and 10 from the 27-yard line. Eldridge in motion. Charles Webb, the long remaining back. Waters to throw, getting left to the sack again. Ken Norton wraps him up and puts him down at the 35-yard line. Mike Lodish also putting pressure on Waters. The, the uh, pressure's going to come up the middle now from number 94, Mike Lodish, and number 41, Ken Norton. There's Lodish coming in to get the first shot, and here comes number 41, Ken Norton, to clean up on him. Nice job by the Bruins. So a great job by UCLA's defense, and that moved Arizona out of Gary Costin field goal range. Lodish out of Birmingham, Michigan. He's a sophomore. Brett Hawley in to do the punting from midfield. He's averaging just under 39. His long is 45. Daryl Henley is deep for UCLA. This is a prime example of a, of a situation where you want that pooch punt. Just try to get that ball, pop it down there so it hits on about the 15-yard line. Have your kicking team get down and surround it. Place themselves between the ball and the goal line and try and down it inside that 6, 7, 5-yard line. Maybe taking the uh, delay of game penalty for Arizona, giving Holly a little bit more room to punt. So Arizona penalized delay of game, and that'll take it back to the 40-yard line, and Brett Holly now from his own 45-yard line to do the punting. Darrell Henley is back at the UCLA Jenner Company. A very high punt for hang time. And it hit an Arizona player at the 15-yard line. And the penalty flag goes down. They have to give him room to catch the football. Good call by the official. No question. That 34-yard punt. What happens on that is you've got to allow that return man to have room to catch the ball. So as he's you're coming down, the Arizona man has got to be two yards away. He's looking at the ball right here. He has no idea what the uh, receiver for UCLA is. That's not a very good move. That's not smart at all. That's uh, Tom Basie. Yeah. Tom will hear about that, too, from the coaches. Basie is one of the outside linebackers for Arizona. He's out of Jackson, Wyoming. This is going to be interesting. Let's see what the call is here. They're going to give that ball to where it hit that, used that uh, Arizona punt cover guy, Bay City. So with 13.25 remaining in the first half, UCLA will have the football first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. It's 10-0 in favor of Arizona. The Pac-10 opener for these two schools. They both have one goal. 
Rose Bowl. That's where they want to be. January 1st, 1988, representing the Pac-10. Troy Aikman, who's done a nice job as the starting quarterback since coming to UCLA. He really has. He has progressed uh, very, very nicely in all of the assorted passing different ranges, short, intermediate, and deep passes for the Bruins. Well, to remind you, more great college football comes your way tomorrow night as the USC Trojans make their prime ticket debut against the California Golden Bears, the best in college football. It's USC versus Cal tomorrow at 5 and only on prime ticket. Aikman has Anderson wide left, Paco Craig wide right, out of the eye, far at fullback, Gaston Green at tailback. Aikman doing some auto-belizing. Green, and he doesn't get anything. He might have lost some yardage. And a nice job by Dana Wells. Galen Allen also backing up Dana on that last play. You know, you see Dana Wells, number 99, the nose tackle of the Arizona Wildcats. He is really something very, very quick individual, and one of the Arizona reporters has labeled him that uh, Wells has the dexterity of a gerbil. Second and 10 for UCLA. Gaston Green, the long remaining back. the catch and he is hit and dropped immediately at the 25 yard line by Darrell Jones, a sophomore out of San Bernardino. Darrell loves contact. He gained attention in practice sessions by leaping to his feet after contact and yelling, I love football. and five for the Bruins at their own 25-yard line. A little over 12 minutes to play first half. 10-0 Arizona leading the Bruins of UCLA. Aikman has protection. Complete over the middle. The tight end Charles Arbuckle. He gets up to the 40-yard line. Tackled unassisted by Chuck Cecil. 14 yards on the play. Arbuckle who missed last weekend because of a sore shoulder. Arbuckle comes in from the, uh, left, the right side of the offensive line on a delay. He'll delay 1,001, 1,002, allowing the linebackers to get back into their drops. Then he'll come into that vacated seam right over the center. And Aikman does a good job of waiting for him and pops the ball in there. First down at the 40-yard line for the Bruins. Play action. Henke is chasing Aikman. And now Kevin Singleton comes up and tackles him at the 39-yard line. Good outside position by Kevin Singleton, 6'2", 226-pound sophomore linebacker. Arizona very high, as you look at Coach Tomey, very high on both those Singleton brothers. Well, Tomey feels that the strong point of the defense, in fact, the strong point of the team is that outside linebacker spot. They have a lot of depth, second and 11 from the 39-yard line. Gaston Green. Can't get outside, and he is tripped up by James DeBoe at the 40-yard line. Chuck Cecil also in on the stop for Arizona. Green so exciting, 10 carries for 31 yards, averaging 3.1 yards a pop. But I'll tell you, on that last play, even though he gained very little, it almost has seemed from up here that uh, one more step, and he would pop that baby and gotten outside for a very big game. Always exciting to watch. Third and 10 for UCLA at their own 40-yard line. Shotgun formation. Complete the Paco Craig at the Arizona 45-yard line. Chuck Cecil made the stop on Paco. Paco Craig running a slant in. Todd Burton, the right corner for the Cats, has good position on him, but Aikman does just one heck of a job of laying that ball right in there. Cecil, number six, comes in late. After the catch is made, gets a hand on and he knocks him down. Paco Craig out of Riverside. He's a senior. Seven catches coming into the little ball game. A big catch right there. Willie Anderson sent wide right by Aikman. Gaston Green. Gaston Green. And he's inside the 35-yard line, down at the 34-yard line as he followed his blocking beautifully. Finally brought down by Darrell Jones, the left side cornerback.
We've got a timeout now. Ten minutes left until halftime here at the Rose Bowl. The University of Arizona leading UCLA 10 to nothing. We'll return in just a minute. Arizona 10, UCLA nothing. UCLA leading the overall series 7-3 and 2. They've never lost a home game to Arizona, and the Bruins have won the last two in a row. But they're trailing with 10 minutes left. First half in this one. They have the football at the Arizona 34-yard line. First and 10. Craig wide left. Anderson wide right. Aikman to throw. Good protection. He fires and it's complete to Arbuckle. And strong Charles Arbuckle gets inside the 20 down at the 19-yard line. Galen Allen along with Boomer Gibson combined on the stop for the Wildcats. Arbuckle does a fine job again of settling into the open area, finding the seam between the two linebackers. There it is. He takes it down up at field eight yards, turns right into the open area, and settles down, gets the ball from Aikman, turns it back upfield for a couple extra yards. Heather Bruin first down. Ball's on the 19-yard line. Again, Troy Aikman audibleizing. Mike Farr in the game, wide left. Gaston Green up the middle, trying to fight for a little bit of yardage and gets uh, a yard, maybe two. Game tackle by DeBoe, Chuck Cecil, Reggie Gaddis. directing the offense for UCLA and through the air he has not missed a one. Eight for eight, 97 yards. Just under nine minutes to play first half. Aikman being rushed, he gets it off and Troy Anderson makes a great catch for a touchdown. Come down the field, take it inside on Todd Burton. He leads Burton back to the corner. Look at the fly of the ball. Just a nice drop of dropping it in right over the outstretched arms of the defender and into the hands of the receiver, Willie Anderson. And he was under great pressure from safety man who changed the ball. Last go for the PAT, and it's good. The field with 8.51 remaining. First half, we've got ourselves a football game. Arizona 10, UCLA 7. for the Bruins in 10 plays, 434, Aikman hitting Anderson on the eight-yard scoring strike as we take one more look. Aikman under pressure, lost it perfectly, and Anderson makes a super catch. Great individual effort by Flipper Anderson to get that body extended, get those hands extended, get his fingertips on the ball and pull it back in. His 10th career touchdown at UCLA. Interesting on that last drive, 10 plays, they had five runs and five passes. Exceptionally well-balanced offense for UCLA. Kirk Maggio getting set to kick off for UCLA. Anderson telling Franco Craig how he did it. He's ninth all-time with 68 catches. Great route he ran. He just took Burden inside, and Burden thought he was definitely coming to the post and really sucked in and came back to the corner. Super route run by Anderson. Mark Greyhouse from his own five. Beautiful run by Greyhouse. He gets up to the 35-yard line. Eric Turner made the stop for UCLA, a 30-yard return for Art Greathouse. Didn't think we'd see too much of Greathouse today. He's got a bad shoulder that suffered last week, but uh, it didn't seem like he's okay. He'll be in there as much as possible. This is a conference game, Jack. Can't keep him out of those. Well, he's a, he's a youngster. He's always a sophomore. One of the top 30 kids recruited his senior year out of high school. Out of the run and shoot, Arizona, first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. McGill in motion. And McGill gets the lateral, and he is out of bounds at the 40-yard line. 
Carnell Lake was there to knock him out of bounds for UCLA. Eric Turner also in on the play for the Bruins. It's imperative as you look at Waters that he just guides and conducts that offense without getting panicky. Now there's no sense in to get uh, pushed or upset or nervous. Just take your time, bring the ball back up the field, and move it down the field and try and get some more points on the board. We have a UCLA player down. Timeout with 8.40 left in the first half. We'll check on the player and let you know how he is when we come back in just a moment. Arizona leading UCLA by three with 8.40 left. First half, the player down, Jeff Glasser. He is the left defensive tackle for the Bruins out of Houston, Texas, a senior. Had nine tackles, one sack, and two tackles for losses coming into the day's ball game. Second and five for Arizona out of the run and shoot. Charles Webb, the long remaining back at full. And on the option, Waters to McGill. Great run by McGill, and he is down at the 36-yard line. Highly brought down by Darrell Henley after traveling 46 yards. A nice run by McGill. You'll see him take the pitch out, but keep your eyes open for number 46, Darrell Lewis. You'll be up the upper right hand. Look at the block he gets right there on the cornerback, number six, Dennis Price. That's what makes that play go. He does a super job of knocking down Price, then gets up and goes downfield to try to pick up another block. Heck of a job, a heck of, a job of running by Reggie McGill on a great block. Also, 49 yards, three carries, and normally he's not a starter, but he looks so good in practice, he won a starting job for this game against UCLA. He's in motion, Webb gets the call, and he gets up to the Bruins 32-yard line before Ken Norton brings him down. Helped out by Chance Johnson. They always come back and they try to hit that fullback on the quick hitter after they get something going outside. And it's not bad. The one thing that I think that Dick Tomey does do more so than other coaches, if a play is successful for him, he may come back to it relatively soon. He won't score it and file it and come back in two or three series. He'll come right back to it the same series. Second and six from the Bruin 31, Webb. And he gets up to the 27-yard line. Evans right the stop. Evans made the stop for UCLA. 39 yards on 11 carries thus far for Charles Webb. He's out of Compton, California. A senior 6'1", 229 pounds. Third and three. Brings up a third and three at the 28-yard line for Arizona. They lead the Bruins by three points. Webb, he did not get it. Great defense by UCLA again. Fine job by the nose tackle, Terry Toomey, and both inside linebackers, Chance Johnson and Ken Norton. And when you see a play stacked up like that, that's the reason behind it. The nose tackle and the, and the two inside backers are doing a heck of a job of stacking everything up. Timeout called by Arizona so they can hold it over. It's fourth and less than a yard from the Bruins' 26-yard line. Timeout with 6.39 remaining first half. The U of A leading UCLA 10-7. to That's the story. 10-7 Arizona leading UCLA. 6.39 left in the first half. They talked it over, and Arizona is going to go for it. Fourth and one from the UCLA 26-yard line. Neal is in wide right. Melvin Smith is in wide left. Out of the wishbone formation. One of the rare times in the first half. And Webb leaps over. No, that's not Webb. It's going to be very, very close depending on the spot. He crossed that chalk line. Let's take another quick peek. Reggie Waters McGill was the ball carrier. Waters just gets the ball, reverse spins out. He hands it to McGill, who goes up over the top. It looks like he's back in beyond the defensive line of scrimmage or the defensive side of the ball, but let's just check for the measurement. He got it. First down for Arizona at the 25-yard line. Darrell Lewis slot on the right, Art Greathouse slot left. Now Greathouse comes in motion. On play action, the pass intended for Greathouse is thrown over his head. Carnell Lake covering on the play for UCLA. 
Waters wanted to push that ball upfield if he could and try to hit one of his outside receivers, Derek Hill, most likely, but uh, he couldn't find him open. He pulled the ball back down, tried to dump it out into the flat to number 40, Art Greathouse, but fortunately for the Bruins, Carnell Lake was in super position. Bobby Waters out of Garland, Texas. It's second and 10 for Arizona at the Bruins 25-yard line. Six minutes, 13 seconds left until halftime, 10-7, Arizona leading. Waters looking for a receiver, and he finds one. Darrell Lewis. Check that. Derek Hill. Derek Hill made the reception. Dennis Price makes the tackle at the 17-yard line. Derek Hill running a simple 8 to 10-yard square out pattern. Waters comes out from center, just lays the ball out there. Price is in pretty good position, but he's going to keep that cushion. Anytime a guy like Derek Hill with the ability that he has gets you one-on-one, -on -one, that defense is back and going to stay back a little bit and keep trying to keep everything in front of him. That was a good one. He led them last year in receptions. They line up in the wishbone. Waters on the pitch to Greathouse. And Greathouse gets inside the 15 down at the 12 or 13-yard line. Kim Norton in on the stop along with Carnell Lake for the Bruins. Good job by Bob Waters on that last play, playing off of the position of Carnell Lake, the outside linebacker. Lake was out there in pretty good fashion, but didn't know quite where to go. And when that happens, you just make a step inside to draw your linebacker in with you and pitch that ball out to your trailer. First and 10, Arizona at the UCLA 12-yard line. Under six minutes to play here in the first half. 10-7, Arizona leading UCLA. A packed in opener for these two schools. McGill in motion. Charles Webb. And he is packed up as he picked up about a yard. Mike Lotus in on the stop, along with Norton and Jim Waller. Fine job by the Bruin defense, the center of the defensive line, again, forcing everything into a little pinch-type motion when that back comes through there, they just shut everything down and jam it right back over the offensive center. Second and eight for Arizona. Ball spotted at the UCLA 10-yard line. Again, out of the wishbone. Jeff Fairholm, wide left. Lance McNeil, wide right. Waters almost tipped up, and he finds McGill, and McGill is out of bounds at the five-yard line. Not so sure if McGill ever thought that Waters was going to find him. It's a little play-action fake right there to Charles Webb. He's looking to his left. All of a sudden, now he finds McGill over there all by himself. There's nobody on McGill. McGill tries to get a block by Derek Hill, his outside receiver, on Dennis Price, and then goes out of bounds. Rob Woods comes in, replacing right guard Doug Penner for Arizona. Arrow wide left. McNeil, wide right. Webb, McGill, and Greathouse in the backfield behind Waters. Waters keeps it himself, but he is down at the three-and-a-half, four-yard line. It looked like a little bit of a bad exchange between Bobby Waters and Charles Webb, his fullback. He stuck that ball into the midsection of Webb, and Webb did not want to allow that ball to come out, and Waters was trying to pull it out. UCLA three-yard line and the Wildcats want another timeout and get it. That stops the clock at four minutes and 20 seconds left first half. Arizona 10, UCLA 7. We'll have more in a moment. The yard is just about even. Nine more for the Bruins, but on the scoreboard, it's a three-point lead for Arizona, 10-7. They lead UCLA. Four minutes and 20 seconds until halftime. Fourth and one from the Bruin three for the Wildcats. And they have run out of timeouts here in the first half. Out of Wishbone. Fairholm, wide left. Derek Hill, wide right. Webb, touchdown, Arizona. So Charles Webb scores from the three-yard line. 
Webb's going to get the handoff from Bobby Waters and take it right off his right guard. Rob Woods powers himself into the end zone. A good job of body extension to try and cross that play. And is he happy, as, as is the rest of his teammates. From another angle, a nice job again. You see him going in off the right guard, powers himself right back into the end zone. Another touchdown. Gary Costin's PAT attempt is good. That means in his Arizona career, he is perfect. 43 of 43 and doing some cheerleading. Terry Donahue has his ball club down to the University of Arizona, 17 to 7, with 417 remaining in the first half. I'll tell you, when I saw them line up to decide and go for it on fourth down, I was going to question that a little bit, but the problem is if you do question it and you're wrong, you look, you have egg on your face, but I, you know, you, anytime you get down and you want to come away with something, a big key play for Arizona, and that's going to add to their confidence overall. UCLA, trailing by 10. Prime ticket takes you to the beach for a final round coverage of the Pro Beach Volleyball Tour at Redondo. Join us for all the action tomorrow night at 8, right here on Prime Ticket. For the Wildcats, it took them 4 minutes and 34 seconds to travel 65 yards in 13 plays, and then Webb took it in from the 3-yard line, and it's 17-7 in Arizona. Oh, they're happy, you bet. Gary Costin sent to kick off from his own 35-yard line. Brian Brown and Gaston Green deep for UCLA. Brown from his own four. Officials confer and we'll wait for the official ruling. Arizona players saying this against UCLA and UCLA going back to line up to take the kickoff again. He may have not had the necessary number of hey, Double penalty offsides on Arizona, flipping on UCLA. Arizona is very happy over that one. Down here asking for an exclamation. So a 95-yard return nullified because of offsetting penalties. And Terry Donahue is fit to be tied, and you can understand why. Yeah, that, that makes you a little bit upset. You know, you work all week on it, and when you get an opportunity to get your back up into the wedge like UCLA did and spring him for a touchdown, they're so far and few between that when they're not successful because of penalty, yeah, you have a tendency to become very upset. And they were working extremely hard on kickoff returns to the right side last week in practice. Well executed by the Bruins, very well executed. The only guy he had any shot was Gary Costin, the kicker, and he just doesn't have the quickness or speed to try and track down Gaston Green. So we'll try it again as Gary Costin again will be booting from his own 35-yard line. And it's a split kick this time. And down at the 30-yard line, Joe Pickard <laughs> tripped himself up. Joe Pickard had bases of going 70 yards with it on a return, and he just couldn't keep his feet. So Costin and Arizona decided to keep it away from both Brown and Green, and now UCLA has it first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. Aikman is still perfect, passing 9 for 9. 17-7 in favor of Arizona. Four minutes remaining, first half. Aikman to throw. Everybody. Now he lost it and it's over the head of Paco Craig. Covering on the play, Chuck Cecil. Also back there, Todd Burton, the right cornerback. They've been wanting to go to Willie Anderson on an out and up route on the right side. Anderson could not get free. 
of Darrell Jones, and he came back to Paco Craig, and by that time, the secondary of Arizona had settled into their positions and had applied good coverage to Paco Craig. That is his first miss of the day. He's 9 of 10. Second and 10 from the 30 for the Bruins. Gaston Green gets very little yardage and up to, up to the 31, brought down immediately by Galen Allen, inside linebacker. New York, New York, a senior, 6'4", 254 pounds. 254 pound linebacker, which means that guy has got to be able to run, and he does. he's got to be able to have the quickness to fill in the holes, and he does that also. Arizona plays an awful lot of players, awful lot of players. Paco Craig, Willie Anderson, wide left, out of the shotgun. Far and Green back with Aikman. Aikman. Anderson locked down at the 24-yard line. From behind by that man, Chuck Cecil, a 44-yard reception. Aikman to Willie Flipper Anderson. Again, Anderson, the senior, six foot, 177 pounder. He'll come in and find the scene. Aikman does a good job of leading him right in between the two defenders. He catches the ball right in stride. Chuck Cecil will come in from the right at the last minute, throw and make the game-saving tackle or the touchdown-saving tackle, rather. There he is, Willie Anderson, Paul's Borough, New Jersey. He was the leading receiver for UCLA last year, and he is the leading receiver this season. Gaston Green reversing his field, and he can't get outside because Boomer Gibson wouldn't let him, let him go. Excellent job by Boomer Gibson, number 44. He's got a brother, Don, who's at USC, but he stayed at home. He was the backside linebacker. The play went away from him, but he did not chase. He stayed at home until the back crossed the line of scrimmage, which Green never did. When Green tried to come back, there was Boomer. Loss of four. It'll be second and 14 from the 28. Aikman has time, so again looking for Anderson, and Willie couldn't hold on to it. Cecil and Blake Custer were in the vicinity with Anderson on the last play for the Wildcats. Two minutes and 16 seconds remaining, first half, 17-7, Arizona leading UCLA. And now we have a timeout called by UCLA. I would think that for Terry Donahue and the Bruins, it's imperative to put some points on the board before they go in at halftime. Well, they're in good shape. They've got two minutes and 16 seconds to go before halftime. They're only down by 10. The ball sitting there on the 28-yard line of Arizona, and they have two timeouts left, or one timeout left. Two, I guess. Yeah, they have two timeouts left. So they're in good shape. Good, strong arm quarterback in Aikman. They can go to the ground if they want with gas and green. They're in pretty good shape. Aikman listening intently to head coach Terry Donahue. What Arizona wants to do here, they want to keep everything in front of them naturally. They don't want to give up the quick, cheap touchdown and a running play. They want to take the ball carrier down and take some time off the clock. Passing situation, third and 14, so they're out of the shotgun. Aikman getting good protection. Now he fires, but it's patted away by Blake Custer. And that time it was intended for Paco Craig. A nice job by inside linebacker Blake Custer to get a hand on the ball. And that'll bring in a UCLA field goal kicker, Alfredo Velasco. And he's had quite a season. 10 for 10 PAT-wise. He's missed one field goal. That was today. And a total of 22 points. This will be a 45-yard attempt. He missed a 46-yard attempt earlier today. This looks like it has the distance. No good. No good. It was off to the right side. So a disappointed Velasco goes back to the UCLA bench. Well, that would have been his longest of the season had he made it. He has a long so far of uh, 42 yards. But that ball just never hooked back up inside, came in between the uprights. He hit it and stayed outside of the right upright and just sailed and kept right on going. Never did come back inside. So Arizona.
Arizona now. We'll see what they can do with the football. A little over two minutes to play. And the Wildcats have a 10-point lead over UCLA here in the first half. Hill in motion near side. Charles Webb on the delay. And he crashes to the 34-yard line. Turner. He was brought down by Marcus Turner of the Bruins. A minute and 50 seconds left to go in the first half. UCLA still has two of their timeouts. If they could have shut down that run, they would be in good position to call a timeout and try and get the Arizona to force them into a punting situation. Coming into the game, Webb had carried the ball seven times. He's doubled that in this first half alone. Second and four from the 34. Eldridge in motion far side. Waters on the option has to keep it, and he eats the football at the 31-yard line. Chance Johnson, the first man to hit him and put him down. Again, very well played by Jeff Glasser, number 58, the left defensive end, but smart play on the part of Bobby Waters, the quarterback. He realized he didn't want to pitch it out and have a chance of maybe Glasser knocking the ball free. Just kept it himself, and Glasser wrapped him up and went down to the ground. We also had a penalty on that last play. So an illegal formation called against Arizona, but it was declined by UCLA. One minute, 23 seconds left until halftime. 17-7, Arizona leading UCLA. Third and seven for the Wildcats at their own 31-yard line. And now UCLA calls another timeout. So we mentioned the fact that Arizona, having scored in this one, 172 consecutive games, UCLA now has scored in 185 consecutive. That is the nation's longest scoring streak. The NCAA record is 186 by USC from 1967 through 1983. Dick Tony. After 10 years as the head coach at Hawaii, comes to Arizona, 64-47-3 in his collegiate career. Very personable guy. I had a chance to sit and chat with him yesterday when they were working out at the bowl. I said, Coach, being that you are from Hawaii, do you own any ne neckties? He said, I have one just in case of an emergency. He said, I, I sell them more. I don't even wear them here in the desert. <laughs> Good crowd on hand on a gorgeous day here in Pasadena. And of course, the, the Bruin fans are hoping that their team will get going here. They're down by 10. Third and seven for Arizona. McGill in motion. Waters has time, and he hits Jerry Hill, who goes out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Nice catch by Derek Hill on the out, on the square out route. We're going to see him take the throw from Bobby Waters, number two. He roll out, this slight roll out to his right, set up, fire that ball out there in the flat. Watch 82 Hill. See both of them, or one of his feet there. It is nice job. Great touch job with the feet. Great, what you call it, his toe dancing the sideline. Did a heck of a job on that. He had quite a game against UCLA last year. So a first down for Arizona. A little over one minute to play until halftime. Lake put pressure on and Waller batted it down. It was intended for Charles Webb out of the backfield. Jim Waller almost got himself a quarterback. He did. He wanted to go to a little bit of a uh, halfback screen to the left. Waters rolls out. He sets up. He looks downfield. Now he wants to dump it off. Looks like he's trying to get to the 34, which he is his fullback, Charles Webb, but Waller played it very smart, came right down the line with the fullback, stayed with him in a man-to-man -man situation, and reached up over the top and knocked it away. Melvin Smith is into the game for Arizona, wide left. Branch McNeil, wide right. On the option, Waters keeps it, and he is tackled by Cornell Lake at the 39-yard line. This Carnell Lake, we've talked about him a lot the last two weeks. He's just having a super job. And I know that Ken Norton is the uh, Buckus and Lombardi candidate, but you can't say enough about this youngster, Carnell Lake. He may be the best defensive player for UCLA right now. Came into this game second on the team in tackles with 28. 18 of those unassisted. Time running out here in the first half. Third and 11 for Arizona. 
Darrell Lewis in motion far side. Webb has it. What a great second effort to keep this beat. He crosses the 45 up to the 46-yard line where he's stopped by Eric Turner. Here's a situation, Jeff, where the Wildcats having no timeouts and they want to get down and try to get a field goal attempt from Costin, but not having any timeouts, it's being Costin. So UCLA does have one timeout left, and they use it here, stopping the clock with 27 seconds left until halftime. Now, this is interesting. Now, if I was coaching, let me ask you, if you were coaching, what would you do? Would you punt the ball? No, I'd try to eat up to 27 seconds. That's what I do. If I was a punter, I'd take that ball and run around and run as long as I could without getting tackled. And uh, don't worry about gaining a lot of yards because neither team has a timeout left. Especially when you have the dangerous return man, Gerald Henley. And we recall in the first game against San Diego State, he ran one back 74 yards for a touchdown. So you don't want to have that possibility. That's exactly right. If Tommy is looking at that guy, he may tell his partner, Holly, why don't you just run around a little bit and then uh, fall on the ball. We don't want to give you CLA a chance to get a good run back for a touchdown. Well, the machinery clicking in both heads of the respective coaches. Let's see what happens now. Fourth and four. Brent Holly back at his own 31-yard line. <laughs> Tim Shanahan, the long snapper for Arizona. It's a good snap. Holly punts it away. Henley calls for a fair catch. And he makes it at his own 14-yard line. A 40-yard punt. No return. So UCLA could get a couple of plays off. They've got 19 seconds left until halftime. So plenty of time to get, uh, if they get a couple of big pops here. In 19 seconds, you can run about three plays. If you do it very quickly, you can get four of them in. One of them to be naturally just to try and stop the clock. But there's plenty of time to get in within field goal range, provided you get a couple of big pops. UCLA will work out of the shotgun. Willie Anderson, Paco Craig are sent wide to the left. Arbuckle tied in on the right side. Aikman, and plenty of time, now he's getting rushed. He gets away from 99, Dana Wells, and he leaps up to the 24-yard line. Well, that's going to be it. There's three seconds to go, and they can't stop the clock. There's the gun ending the first half of action here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Our halftime score in this Pac-10 opener. The University of Arizona, 17, UCLA, 7. We've got a lot of uh, information to pass on to you if you're in our halftime activity, so you'll want to stay tuned for that in just a moment. The, the war as far as the passing game, 160 to 56. Total yards, UCLA out in front there. Two turnovers for the Bruins, one for Arizona. And time of possession, 16-37 for the Wildcats, 13-23 for UCLA. Anything jump out at you, Jack? No, nothing really. Again, the key factor were the two turnovers by the Bruins in the first half. They can stay away from that. It may be a different ballgame in the second half. Okay, we'll be back with the second half kickoff from the Rose Bowl right after this. of today's UCLA Bruin football game is brought to you by Stroh's and Strohlite. Now, you're talking good times, and Stroh's is spoken here. We're just about ready for the second half kickoff. Arizona leading UCLA 17-7. to Can UCLA for the second consecutive season come from behind and beat Arizona? Terry Donahue certainly hopes so. Arizona, who deferred when they won the flip of the coin, they'll receive here in the second half and defend the northern goal to our left. Derek Hill from his own one. Great house leading the blocking. And he is finally brought down at the 23-yard line. Eric Turner was one of the Bruins in on the stop. <laughs> And Craig Davis also helped out for the Bruins. Bobby Waters comes in at quarterback in the first half. He was 5 of 9 for 56 yards, one touchdown, and he was kicked off one time. That's the first time he's been intercepted this season. 
out of the run and shoot. Lewis in the slot right, he goes in motion. Webb gets the call and he gets up to the 25-yard line. Ken Norton, Jim Waller, Chance Johnson, and Jeff Glasser, who's back in the ball game, all in on the stop for UCLA. Some more hard yards by Charles Webb, the fullback, starting in place of Alonzo Washington. As we mentioned, he's having a pretty good day so far. Some key carries, some key yardage gain. Second and eight for Arizona. McGill in motion. Webb again. And he gets up to the 28-yard line. Again, big Jeff Glasser in on the stop from his defensive left tackle position. Jim Waller helped out. Webb already with 67 yards on 19 carries and one touchdown. Third and five from the 28-yard line for Arizona. Just the start of this count. 17-7 in favor of the Wildcats. I'm Jeff Witcher along with Jack Snow. I hope you're enjoying an exciting college football here on Prime Ticket. The pass was picked off by Jeff Damron, and he's down at the Arizona 34-yard line. So Damron playing in place of the injured Washington. Intercepts for UCLA. Waters wants to hit number eight. Reggie McGill on a little slant right here. He goes right into the strength of the UCLA defense. Here comes Damron from right to left. Picks it off and then goes down with a big, big interception for UCLA. First and ten for the Bruins at the Arizona 35-yard line. Plague and Anderson wide left. Far and Green out of the eye. Green gets the pitch. And it's been Green. Gets to the 32-yard line. Jerry Beasley in on the stop for Arizona. Beasley out of Tucson, Arizona. He's a senior. 6'2", 229 pounds. And we had a penalty flag thrown on that last play, so hold everything. Face mask against the Arizona defense. Well, that doesn't help the defensive effort right here. You certainly don't want one of those penalties to aid the offense. And uh, UCLA's got the ball back in great shape, and now you give him a penalty. That's a no-no. So with the turnover, UCLA in their best field position in the ball game. And the penalty takes it inside the Arizona 30 to the 28-yard line. Gaston Green, the long remaining back. Green powers his way up to the 25-yard line. Reggie Gaddis, along with Dana Wells, for Arizona. 46 yards on 16 carries, so Green has had a tough day against a stingy Arizona defense. Not the kind of numbers that you that you want when you're looking for that Heisman Trophy. And let's be honest about it, he's a good back, but he's just not having the success today that he needs to have for that trophy. Second and one from the 25 for UCLA. Just under 13 minutes to play, third quarter. Hancock goes to fullback, Mel Farr, and he's down at the 20-yard line. Darrell Jones made the tackle. Jones made the tackle. First down. Good play selection that time, handing the ball off to Mel Farr, who just on a little fullback dive, cutting right back against the grain, picked up some big yardage. Darrell Jones actually prefers to be called by his nickname, DJ. He's a sophomore, 5'10", 178. First and 10, UCLA. Gaston Green. Gaston Green. And he can't get outside because Chris Singleton wouldn't let him. Nice individual effort by one of the Singleton twins. In this case, Chris. He's 6'3", 232. Gaston Green taking the pitch from make when he wants to go outside. He's going to get a good block from 22 mil far. But Singleton that comes up from his outside backer position comes up inside. He makes it look relatively easy. It really wasn't that difficult. Of course, Singleton is a very good athlete. 6'3", 232 pound outside linebacker. Second and 11 from the 20 for UCLA. Aikman drops straight back to throw over the middle, and it's complete. Big Charles Arbuckle inside the 10-yard line of Arizona. Galen Allen was there, so was Boomer Gibson. 
Another big play, another big route run by Charles Arbuckle. In crucial situ situations, which is about the third one today, that Arbuckle has made a very good catch, a key catch to keep the drive going. So it is first and goal for UCLA at the Arizona 9. 11 and a half to play, third quarter. Arizona leading by 10. Handoff goes to Brian Brown. And Brown is battling his way down to the seven-yard line. Brown, who had that 95-yard kickoff return, nullified. Tackled by Galen Allen and Dana Wells. Giving Gaston Green a rest is Brian Brown coming in as well again. Five carries for 53 yards. Nice average of 10.6. Double tight end set. Arbuckle on the left. Pickard on the right. Danny Thompson into the game. It goes to Brown again. He cuts inside. Still on his feet. Finally brought down by a gang of Arizona. A wild catch at about the three-yard line. A good block from 15. Danny Thompson is a key right here. Brown gets the ball. He's going to go outside. You'll see Thompson on the left-hand side, knocking James the ball out. Brown cuts up inside. Does a good job of running. Gets some good blocking from the right side of that line. Richards and John Kidder turns it up, picks up four or five additional yards. James DeVoe was shaken up on that last play, and he's been replaced by Randy Kendrick. Third and goal for UCLA. He turns on the three. Thompson in motion. Play action. Aikman fires. <laughs> Charles Arbuckle, the pride of Houston, Texas, and he's happy as we take another look at the touchdown pass thrown by Troy Aikman. Little play action fake into number 30 Brown. Well, in the meantime, Charles Arbuckle is delaying one, two, three counts and releasing into the flat. He's over there with Thompson, and it puts us one defender from Arizona in there. He can't watch both of them. The PAT by Alfredo Velasco is good. Arbuckle with the touchdown reception. That stops the clock with 10 minutes and 7 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And UCLA closes the gap. It's Arizona by three. Arizona now leading 17 to 14 over UCLA. One more look at that touchdown. Again, Arbuckle coming from his tight end side on the left side will delay a couple of counts and release out into the flat. Aiken rolling out, semi rolls out, finds them all alone in the corner there, just inside the goal line. Easy pass, nice route run by the young sophomore tight end. Kirk Maggio set the kick off for UCLA. for Arizona on the left of your screen, number 40, Art Greathouse, and on the right of your screen, number 82, Derek Hill, as Terry Donahue knocks it over with some of his players on the UCLA sideline. And it's for Derek Hill at the seven. And he is tripped up at the 25-yard line. And I believe it was Alexander who got a piece of it. As Waters, the prime quarterback for Arizona, gets his instructions, and here he goes. Five and ten, 56 yards, one touchdown, and he has been picked off twice. First and ten, Arizona at their own 25-yard line. Out of the run and shoot. Lewis in motion. Charles Webb, penalty for Chance Johnson makes the tackle on Webb. Johnson. Charles Arbuckle, 42 yards on four catches and the one TD. All big catches, too, in my head, Jeff, to keep, either keep drives going, keep drives alive, and one quarter touchdown. I think we're going to have an uh, illegal formation. We have two offensive backs moving at the same time. Reggie McGill thought he was supposed to go in motion, but he was not. That's one of the downsides when a team is 
using a wishbone and a run and shoot, and for the first time, yeah, especially in their first year, in the third game of their first year, it is difficult, but uh, they'll get those things ironed out. Hopefully it won't be too long. You might recall the last time UCLA scored, Arizona came right back with a touchdown. Let's see what they do this time. Under 10 minutes to play, third quarter, 17-14 in favor of Arizona. Second and seven from their own at 28-yard line. Dazzle and he fires incomplete. Way short of his intended receiver, Jeff Fairholm, covering on the play was Alan Dial of UCLA. Fairholm comes from clear across the field as Waters pitches out here to Derek Hill, who came in motion. Hill is looking for Fairholm running an over route, but he just throws the ball right into the dirt. We have not heard of Fairholm all day today. He's too much of a valuable asset offensively for the Cats. They've got to get him involved in the game. Big third down play for Arizona. Third and seven from the 28. Lewis in motion, far side. Waters has time. And he's firing incomplete, almost picked off by Alan Dial. The intended receiver was Lewis, but it was thrown way in back of him. You know, Bobby Waters did not read that coverage very well. Alan Dial was sitting there in great shape, but... Uh, Waters does not want to throw that ball into that double cover as he did in the last play. In addition, there was a penalty flag around the play. Now the crowd now getting into this football game for the first time today. Holding offense declined. Fourth holding against Arizona declined by UCLA. So it brings up fourth and seven. Holly will do the punting. Gerald Henley deep for UCLA at his own 34-yard line. And they are going to try to put as much pressure on Holly as possible. He gets it away. Fair catch signal, but it bounces in front of Henley. And Arizona swarms around it as it rolls dead at the 35-yard line. A 37-yard punt by Holly, no return. 9.21 remaining, third quarter, Arizona leading UCLA by three. Another great night of music comes to Prime Ticket this Tuesday night as we present an evening of jazz. See jazz stars such as Alphonse Luzon, George Howard, Jeff Lorber, and more from the forum in an evening of jazz. That's Tuesday, 7.30, right here on Prime Ticket. Well, the crowd is getting a little bit jazzed now. UCLA fans in particular. A lot of them on hand. 17 to 14, Arizona, third quarter, 9-21. And UCLA has the football first and 10 at their own 36-yard line. Mel Farr, fullback, Gaston Green, tailback. Paco Craig, wide right, Anderson, wide left. Pitch out to Green. Still on his feet, midfield, and he's into Arizona territory. Knocked out of bounds by Randy Kenrad. Gaston Green explodes for 16 yards. This is the Gaston Green that we have all come to know and love and expect from the option off of 97, George Hinkle giving Arizona some of its own medicine. Cecil comes in and misses him. Number five, DJ Jones is there to try and apply the pressure and slow him down. Gaston Green from Gardena. First and 10 for UCLA at the Arizona 47-yard line. Play action, a nice fake by Aikman. And now he completes the pass at the 43-yard line to Gaston Green. And the tackle was made by Boomer Gibson. He can catch two. A lot of time to see him getting involved in the offense as a receiver. He faked the dive play guys right up over center and curled out to the right side into the secondary for the short pass. Pick up of four second and six from the 43-yard line. Green again. Breaks one tackle. And he gets down to the 37-yard line. Boomer Gibson had helped out on that last tackle. Jerry Beasley, the first man to hit it. Green looks like he's a little more motivated this second half. Somebody may have talked to him at halftime and said, Gaston, you've got to get going here. Now let's turn the burners on. 19 carries for 68 yards. you got to be better. You've got to have better statistics than that. 
in addition, I think the offensive line is showing some aggressiveness as Dick Tomey in his first year at Arizona looks on. Tomey's getting a little nervous now. He knows he had a nice, comfortable 10-point lead. Now he's just getting a little bit nervous. They measure for the first down, and UCLA is inches short. Short by about six inches. Back Terry Donahue was very upset with the performance of the offensive line last week against Fresno State as he talks it over with one of his assistant coaches. He said after that ball game that is as poor a performance from an offensive line as he's seen in his 12 years as head coach at UCLA. Yeah, that's right, and that's, as you saw that last picture, that's exactly who he was talking to was Don Riley, the center and guard coach. Third and one, a quarterback keeper, Aikman has the first down and then some. He gets up to the 35-yard line. Dana Wells get on the tackle for Arizona. So a nice job by the offensive line moving Arizona defensive people. And Aikman picks up the first down easily. Seven minutes and 50 seconds left, third quarter. 17-14 in favor of Arizona. Play action. Aikman to Willie Anderson. And he is down at the 12-yard line. A 23-yard reception. D.J. Jones made the stop for the Wildcats. Another good call. A post route run by Willie Anderson. He was at the top of the screen. A little fake in here. The fullback to hold the linebackers. Anderson running on Darrell Jones. D.J. DJ Jones. It's a good pass. Low, slow backside. Anderson comes back, slows down, makes the catch. Jones draped all over him. First and ten for UCLA on the Arizona 12-yard line. Gaston Green goes in motion. Incomplete intended for Paco Craig in the end zone, but it was a poorly thrown pass. And Daniel Wells was putting a lot of pressure on Aikman. I was going to say, number 99, big number 99, 261 pound junior Daniel Wells came in that time. And a little bit of havoc in that second row in that backfield for the Bruins. Aikman, a great day through the air, 14 of 18, 201 yards, and two touchdowns. One to Willie Anderson, the other to Charles Arbuckle. He has three in the last two ball games. Second and ten from the 12. David Keating wide left. This is the game now for UCLA. Pitch goes to Green. Nice individual effort. And he gets to the 10. He very easily could have been thrown for a loss. Richard Gaddis and Randy Kendrick doing a nice job coming in there, stopping the Bruin. They want to squeeze him down. They don't want Green to get outside. So what's going to have to happen is you're going to have to get superb play from both the Singleton twins. Chris Singleton on the right and Kevin Singleton on the left, the outside backers, and force Green back inside where they have more help defensively. George Hinkle replacing Dana Wells, who is exhausted. He's a breather. Third and eight for UCLA. to 20. Kevin Singleton, the first man to hit him. And the twins, Singleton's Chris and Kevin doing some hugging. Kevin Singleton coming from the right side on a linebacker blitz. Aikman wanted to hit his slap back on the left side. Could not get the ball off in time because both of his receivers ran into each other. This will be a 36-yard attempt for Velasco. He's missed two today. His only two misses of the 1987 campaign. This one is good. I'm out here at the Rose Bowl. Six minutes and five seconds left in the third quarter. And UCLA has caught Arizona. It's a 17-17 tie. UCLA 63, the total yards, third quarter, Arizona just five, and UCLA has caught up, it's 17 all. Mazio set to kick off, again at Great House and Hill Deep. Eight-yard line, crosses to 20, 25, 30, still on his feet. 
beautiful run. He gets up to the 40-yard line. Finally brought down by Turner. A 32-yard return. Again, remember now, he's playing with a thumb shoulder, a very sore shoulder. That's why he did not start today, but a great talent. Only in his sophomore year, he'll be now standing back by the time he gets to be a senior. First and 10 for the Wildcats at their own 39-yard line. Under six minutes to play here in the third quarter. Hope you're enjoying this exciting Pac-10 opener, UCLA and Arizona. I'm Jeff Witcher along with Jack Snow. Out of the wishbone. Good yardage up to the 45-yard line. Chance Johnson brought him down for the Bruins. Ken Norton was also there. Again, taking the first option of the bone, which is that fullback right up the gut that has been very, very successful for the Cats today, and they want to maintain their composure. Don't lose it now. It's a tie ball game. Things are starting to slip away from them offensively. Keep their cool. Game of six, second and four from the 45. The option Waters keeps it out. He pitches to Claythouse, and Claythouse dies to the UCLA 40 four yard line. <laughs> Waters will fake into the fullback to hold the linebackers, come down the line of scrimmage, pitch it out with his left hand to Claythouse, working on Melvin Jackson. Jackson can't get out there. Did a good job by Claythouse turning it upfield, puts that shoulder and head down, and just drives north and south, picks up some extra yards. 5, 10, 200. Three pounds sophomore out of Tempe, Arizona. 14 yard game. Four carries, 19 yards. Interesting, he is an electrical engineering major. Bobby Waters has really done a nice job in a leadership role for Arizona. The transfer from SMU, he's a senior by the way, 5'11", 184. First and 10, they squatted at the 41-yard line of UCLA. A handoff to Webb, and UCLA hits him and drops in behind the line of scrimmage. Terry Toomey, the outstanding nose guard for the Bruins, the first man to hit him. Toomey having a good day, number 40, the nose tackle. There's Webb, 34. Toomey fights off the block of the All-American Joe Toffelmeyer and becomes an All-American himself for one play. Nice job by Terry Toomey. All packed in, Terry Toomey and Toffelmeyer, one of the finest centers in the country. Second and 12 from the Bruin 43-yard line for Arizona. On play action, Waters has plenty of time looking for Derek Hill. He's got it. This ball of Waters is going to throw is basically under thrown because Hill is running a fly route. He has him beat. He being Daryl Henley. Now watch number two and number 82 in the lower right-hand corner. Both stopping to come. Henley leaves a little bit too soon. Derek Hill goes up over the top, pulls it away from Henley and goes out of bounds on the one-yard line. Derek Hill, a local product from Southern California out of Carson. First and goal for Arizona out of the wishbone at the Bruin one-yard line. Charles Webb, touchdown, Arizona. So the Arizona fans have something to cheer about again as the Wildcats do some celebrating. That is the second touchdown of the game for Charles Webb. Again, hard running coming off the ball. Webb's going to take it, number 34 from his fullback spot. Right up good. in there behind his center, Joe Toffelmeyer. His right guard, Bottles, and Tom Lynch, the right tackle, gets into the end zone for his second touchdown of the day. 72 yards, 21 carries, and a couple of touchdowns. Quite a day for Charles Webb. Gary Costin attempting the PAT, and he hits another one. Timeout on the field, four minutes and 19 seconds left in the third quarter, and we've got quite a ball game now. Arizona back out in front of UCLA, 24 to 17. Arizona leading UCLA by seven, 419 left, third quarter. Arizona was set to kick off on their last scoring drive. It took just a half dozen plays. They traveled 61 yards in a minute, 44, and then Webb took it in from one yard out. 24 sevens and eight. Gary Costin set to kick off for Arizona. 
Dan Brown and Gaston Green. Dave Brown at the top of your screen and Gaston at the bottom of your screen. Taken by the up man, Randy Austin. And he crosses the 30, follows the football. It's loose. Let's see who got it. Arizona says they did. We'll wait for the official ruling. UCLA got it back. Austin reached that big paw out there and tried to bring it back into him. I don't think he's the one who recovered. Maybe he was. He said, oh, Randy yeah. Austin had that football slip away, and I believe he got it back himself. It might have been a Roman Fitzer who got it back. First and ten, Bruins at their own 33. Out of the eye, far fullback, green and tailback. Green. Trying to get outside, he gets by Cooper Jackson. And Chuck Cecil makes the stop as he crosses into Arizona territory at the 47 and a half yard line. Another nice run by 44, Gaston Green, and that's what he's what he's supposed to do. He's looking a lot quicker. He's going to start out to his left, watch a plant come back to his right side, read his blockers very, very well. Nice job by Richards and Kidd on the right-hand side. Gets by Brewer, gives him 44, and then Darrell Jones, number five, settles down to knock him down, but fortunately for Arizona, six Cecil's in there prior. Brewer first down at the 47-yard line. On play action, Aikman getting rushed. Gets away from Gannis, still on his feet. And he is tripped up at the 45-yard line by Jerry Beasley. A great play by Beasley, and an even better play by Aikman, eluding Arizona tackler. Heck of a play by Aikman. He wants to throw that ball downfield. He's looking to his right. He'll come back, look to his left. He's going to get some pressure from Gaddis, 92. Gaddis should have wrapped him up right there. Matter of fact, so should have 97, George Hinkle. Now watch him tuck the ball away. Get some nice run. Nice job by Troy Aikman. Second and nine for UCLA. Gaston Green. Green gets up to the 42 and a half yard line. Jerry Beasley again and on the stop for Arizona. Seemed to you, Jeff, as if the offensive line for UCLA is kind of coming alive in the second half. There's no doubt about off. it, Jack. I agree with you 100%. They're floating off the ball last week. They looked rather uh, lackadaisical and so so in the first half of this ball game. But the second half, they're really popping out there. 2.45 remaining third quarter. Arizona by seven points in this ball game. 24 to 17. Green in motion near side. Aikman has plenty of protection. Fires complete to the hard left at the 35 yard line. Right now by Kevin Singleton. And the UCLA fans applaud. It's good for another UCLA first down. Jerry Beasley helped out with the Wildcats on that last tackle. Out of Buckle coming into the ball game. He's got five catches today. Outstanding with 49 yards coming into the day. He had seven. A key, big key receiver for the UCLA Bruins, especially in third downs. He settles again into the steam, into the zone, finds the opener, and he knocks himself down in there, makes the catch, and then he's brought down by Jerry Beasley, number 43. He also was shaken up a little bit on that last play. Remember, he has a sore shoulder. He sat out last weekend's victory over Fresno State, and the shoulder is not 100%, and he will lose for the time being. I think he made his move, came into his own against Nebraska. Had a great game that day. Caught four or five big passes. So he's going to go out and take a little bit of a blow right here. Can you imagine your first collegiate start and it's against Nebraska? He made it count. He certainly did. That's, that's very true. He made some very key catches for the Bruins. A little over two minutes to play. Third quarter, first and ten for UCLA. 34-yard line of Arizona. Gaston Green. Nice hole, and he hit it quickly, and he's inside the 30 down at the 28-yard line of Arizona. Chuck Cecil, along with Jerry Beasley, combined on the stop for the Wildcats. And Green now picking up big yardage here in the third quarter. Again, taking the toss from Aikman, gets it in behind 79, David Richards, and then he cuts back. He gets the flow going to his right, and he'll come right back across the flow, try to find the seam to hold, pop it through. 56 yards here in the third quarter for Gaston Green. Second and five for the Bruins at the 29-yard line of Arizona. Arizona leading UCLA, 24-17. Green on the reverse to Willie Anderson. Chris Singleton with right there. He wasn't available. Great play by Chris 
single to another Arizona. Heads up play by the outside linebacker, one of the twins, 6'3", 232 pounds. He's going to hang at home. He's going to stay at home. He's going to be a little reverse. Green, he's going to hand off. Number 83, Willie Anderson, coming back. But I'll tell you what, there he is, number 87, Chris Singleton. Never leaves his assigned area on the field. Boy, Arizona, what UCLA has used, the razzle-dazzle, hasn't been fooled at all. And you make a good point because they stay home. That's so important. Third and 15 from the 39 of Arizona for UCLA. Play action. Aikman had all day to throw, but nobody's open. And now he's got it at the 20 yard line. A 19 yard pass play with Joe Pickard, the tight end, Joe Pickard, who also has a sore shoulder. You see Jay Jones. Galen Allen and Blake Custer all in on the play for Arizona. On the pass play to Arbuckle, he's been the primary. On this one to pick it, he is not the primary. He's an alternate receiver. As you look at it, from look around, but watch the great job that Joe Pickard does in settling in again into that open area. Catches the ball and covers it up, and he is ailing a little bit. First and ten for UCLA at the Arizona 20. And Aikman again honorabilizing. The pitch goes to Caston Green. He's got room trying to get outside. He turns the corner and he is out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Randy Kenwood, one of the Arizona defenders, to make the stop on Caston Green, who again showed up his great athletic ability. 16th career 100-yard game as he passes the century mark today. Nice job, he gets by outside of uh, 42, it's Lake Custer. Here comes number 30 in there, Randy Kinder to finally apply the stop as Gaston Green goes down to the 10-yard line. 108 yards on 24 carries. First and goal from the nine for the UCLA Brewer. Play action. Aikman now is going to run with the football. He gets down to the five-yard line. Galen Allen made the stop for Arizona. football game would take a little took a little while to unfold especially for UCLA but we've got a dandy now as we get ready for the final 15 minutes Terry Valley he was growing second and goal from the Arizona Live and they're down by seven Anderson wide right Cashman Green is tripped up at the six or seven yard line of James DeVoe came in from his strong safety position to make the play. Just a great play, buddy. There's Danny Thompson. He's going to take the point in there. He's going to give it to Troy Aikman. Thompson will line up as a wing back, probably going motion. He'll be used as a blocker primarily. So far this year he has been. Nervous time for Terry. Ball spotted at the seven yard line. It'll be third and goal for UCLA. Again, the double tight end set. Pickard on the left. Marbuckle on the right. Glad to see he's okay and back in the UCLA lineup. Rolling right, Aikman. Rolling. A UCLA fans has something to cheer about. Mel Barr, his fifth career touchdown as a Bruin. They line up in the power formation, a little fake to his halfback. Here comes the ball, but he lays that ball up and out very nicely to 22. Mel Barr, he gets it on about the two-yard line, gets by Blake Custer, takes it into the end zone for the tying touchdown, if they make the extra point. Alfredo Velasco will try to tie it up with 14-18 left to the football game. Out of the hole with Kurt Maggio. It's good. 14 minutes and 18 seconds left in this Pac-10 opener, and we've got a ball game. UCLA 24, Arizona 24. Back after this. So 
the Bruins on that scoring drive traveled 67 yards in 11 plays. It took just over five minutes, and then Aikman, another scoring fast. This one, the fullback, no far from seven yards out, and it's 24-24. We're going to see it again. Remember now, far Norm primarily has the ball carrier or a blocker, but he comes out of the backfield on a nice job of faking into the line, sliding out into the flat area, taking the pass from Aikman, scooting into the end zone. Aikman having a tremendous conference opener for UCLA. It was 17 of 21 for 235 yards and three touchdowns. Kurt Maggio to kick off. Derek Hill and Reggie McGill deep for Arizona. McGill at his own eight-yard line. And he's up to the 26-yard line. And he was stopped there by Roman Piper. Troy Aikman. Tremendous numbers against Arizona. 17 and 21, that goes to the exceptional one. But any time you throw 21 passes and you don't complete four of them, you can take up a team that's outstanding. Water strikes out the Arizona Wildcats. It's first and 10. They're all in a 26 yard line. Out of the wish club. They're all wide left. Charles Webb. He doesn't get very much. And the Bruins fans really enter the football game now. Yeah, they're coming alive. They were a little reserved in that first half as if they figured, well, at any moment we're going to bury these guys from Tucson. That hasn't happened. As you look at Bobby Waters getting his sign and coming in from the sideline, offensive coordinator Ben Griffith, who also works with the quarterback, crashing in the signals. No game on that last play. Second and ten for Arizona. And the run and shoot. Lewis in motion. Near side. Waters getting left. Fires complete to Derek Hill. And then he steps out of bounds at the 36-yard line. <laughs> Dennis Price, the Bruin, that hit him. He had some help stepping out of bounds. I think Dennis Price definitely had to put his shoulder in there to aid him going across that chalk line. But there's a very talented guy as you look at him. Penalty. And a big one, a holding penalty against Arizona. Well, this is one thing Arizona does not want to have happen to them right now. They're going to take some time in their offense to move the ball up and down the field into the scoring range or for the touchdown, but you don't want unneeded penalties to come in and, and put a banter on it. An official came over to Arizona head coach Dick Tomey to tell him what had happened and who the culprit was. Defensive captain Ken Norton listening. Offense, replay second down. So it'll be second down again. Mel Farr, who just scored moments ago on that touchdown, pass thrown by Aikman. Second and 15 from the 21. Arizona lines up to the wish ball. Airhorn wide left. Lewis comes in motion. Flyers fires over the middle. for UCLA with a wait and see who the penalty is against. Turner out of Ventura. 6'1", 194. He's a red shirt freshman. He's got good size, and as you saw, he runs well. Blocking below the waist against the Bruins. They're going to allow that interception, I'm sure of that, but they will nullify the touchdown. Waters going, number two, Bobby Waters is trying to go for Derrick Hill, 82 on a slant. The problem is he never sees 29, Eric Turner come in. Turner's in a great spot. He'll make the interception right here. Let's see if we can pick up the block below the waist. As Turner takes off to the races, he sees all that green grass in front of him. He knows he's going to score. There's the flag, so we see it later. It looks like I couldn't really tell 31. It may have been Carnell Lake at the last moment. So UCLA has the football. First to 10 at the Arizona 34-yard line. Out of the eye, James Primus at fullback. Play action. Aikman 
and they can't uh, get it to Mel Farr. It was a little bit short. Incomplete. He had far out there, too, in the flat. He used to be the ball. That wasn't far out there. You with James Primus, number 23. He had him out in the flat. He just threw the ball on the ground. That'll bring up a second and ten from the Arizona 34 for UCLA. 13 minutes, 18 seconds left in the football game. 24 24. Caston Green. Good is up the middle. He's down at the 30-yard line. Blake Custer in on the stop for Arizona. Troy Aikman, quarterback for UCLA. Bobby Waters, a fine quarterback of Arizona. And how do they match up? Well, Aikman is winning the battle so far in this one. There's a killer that intercepts him right there. Three interceptions for Waters and zero for Aikman. There's a big third and five play for Aikman and UCLA. Looking to pass, now he fires and it's complete. Very, very close to a first down. The Arbuckle hit immediately and dropped by Blake Custer, and it will depend on the spot. Another good job of a nice route run by Charles Arbuckle, but he took a shot after he made that catch by Blake Custer. First down, UCLA. 12 minutes, 32 seconds left in this Pac-10 opener. It's been exciting. Certainly glad you could join us. I'm Jeff Witcher along with Jess Snow. And it's nervous time for Terry Donahue. That was a good nervous look, as you saw. He's got the ball sitting down there on the 23. That's a good nervous sign. White bar is wide right. We must have pulled back. Yes, we bring the tail back. Our buckle in the slot. Right side, Gaston Gray, he's inside the 20-yard line. George Hinkle, the first man to hit him. Jerry Beasley also was in on the stop for the Wildcats. Instead of Frank Cornish, the offensive center, Rick Meyer, the left guard, or Rick Meyer, I'll get it right one of these games, working on Dana Wells and Jerry Beasley, the nose tackle and right inside backer of Arizona. UCLA with a second and six from the Arizona 19-yard line, under 12 minutes to play in this Pac-10 opener. Look for Anderson, wide right, our buckle in motion, and Gaston Green gets to the 15-yard line. And Custer, you know, was not Terry Donahue. What a tremendous job he's done as head coach. And Tommy, hoping to continue the tradition established by Larry Smith in Arizona. I tell you this, and this is going through Tommy's mind as we just watched him. The camera was on him. He's happy to be this close at this point in the ball game. I can guarantee that. Yeah, he talks into the ball game for UCLA. He comes in motion. short of the first down inside the 15-yard line. Waters with an injury and ice taking care of the problem. Maybe he's had a headache or he may have got smacked on the arm. It looks like he had it up to his a moment ago. Maybe his hand has just maybe a problem. That's probably what it is. He's got that both hands touched around that ice bag, and maybe a finger would have gotten uh, either pinched back a little bit or maybe had to extend it. The crowd extolling their bullets. Mel Farr back into the game at fullback. It's fourth and one from the Arizona 14-yard line. Will they work the quarterback deep? No. Gaston Green. He's got the first down at the 10-yard line. Now Ed Singleton finally makes the stop. Again, Gaston Green as he goes off the right side, and it seems as in every crucial situation, the UCLA Bruins are sending Green over to that right side behind him. Big David Richards and John Fitter. So far, it's been very, very, it's worked very well for UCLA. The nose of the football just outside the 10-yard line. Gaston Green, 126 yards on 30 carries, 24-24 hour score, under 10 minutes to play. Green, the long remaining back, he's got it. And he is hit very hard as he crosses the 10 down at the 9-yard line by Brad Hemke. Hemke out of San Diego, 6'4", 253, a junior. 
the backup quarterback to Waters, Ron Deal. He's a true freshman, and he filled in when Waters had the hit pointer last weekend and did a tremendous job. He's out of Florida. Got a howitzer for an arm also. Second down and nine. Eight mobilizing. and Jerry Beasley get out of the tackle for Arizona. <laughs> See what I'm impressed with uh, with the way you see he's bounced back in the second half and turned it on, especially the offensive line. I'm definitely impressed that Green has pushed his go button, which he did not have on the first season in the first half. But most of all, I'm impressed with the, the uh, tenacity of the defense of the University of Arizona. Gaston Green now with 132 yards on 32 carries. Top ball game. Gaston Green, still battling, trying to get into the end zone, and Arizona will not let him in. All right, coach, what do you do here? You take the field goal, you take the almost automatic three, or you try and push it in for the uh, six points in the touchdown. Jerry Beasley, Reggie Gathers in on that last stop for Arizona. Fourth and one from the Arizona two. We try to find out how much we have to go. Great catch with his play action, bootleg by Aiken, who did not try to come back to his tight end. Gary Donahue doesn't even want to look. <laughs> I love it. Gaston Grady, he dies. No sign yet. Arizona thinks they held. They did. We're going to wait until they are five. We're going to might bring the chain gang out. We'll wait in the city. Now he's looking on these. He's real curious. That official's timeout. Here comes the chain gang. I'll tell you what, Jeff, for a moment it almost looked as if he lost that ball. It'll be second and goal. Second and inches. He's going to get much closer than that. He's only got about three or four inches for the touchdown. Six minutes and 45 seconds left in the football game, and the clock is running. 24-24. Second and goal from the one. Danny Thompson in motion. Again, a quarterback keeper. Touchdown, UCLA! And it took them five minutes and 53 seconds. And Aikman on the quarterback keep 
again to score from the one-yard line. And now it's UCLA leading for the first time in this game, 31 to 24. Kurt Maggio set to kick off. Hill in the gill deep, it's Hill from his own four-yard line. Gets to the 25, and finally it is brought down. Dennis Price made the stop for UCLA. There's a lot of bodies flying all over those waters. It looks like he'll be staying on the bench with his hand around that ice pack. So Waters will stay out and Ron Beal, the freshman, takes over. Four of ten, 96 yards in the second half against New Mexico. Out of the run and shoot, Eldridge in motion. Charles Webb, and he hits a brick wall. Carnell Lake in on the tackle. Total yards in the second half. UCLA 180, Arizona 68. Again, credit that to the offensive line and Gas and Green. They got their act together in the second half and got things in motion, and therefore, according to me, they're just blowing Arizona away. Second and nine from the 26-yard line for Arizona. Ron Miller, 5'10", 197 pounds. He's looking to throw. He's got a very strong arm. It's going along for fair hole. He can't hold on at the 30-yard line. Nice job of covering by Dennis Price. Price had good position. Fair home did have a step and a half on Dennis Price. The ball was a little bit underthrown, and that's natural when Ronald Beal comes in. His first pass of the game. There he is, Steve Fair home with about a step, step and a half. He has to slow down for the ball. Price gets his hand up there inside, knocks the ball away. Good job defensively by Dennis Price. 6'1, 173 pounds, senior. Good instincts, a very, very good athlete. Third down and nine for Arizona. Pass intended for a hill, incomplete. So the UCLA defense does a tremendous job. And Beal, with a lot of pressure, comes off the field. And the UCLA fans, many of them standing and cheering their Bruins. Well, that's kind of a good situation to put a uh, young freshman quarterback in as you look at the Melvin Jackson, 59, and leaving the sidelines. But uh, what else can you do? Obviously, Waters was hurt. Brett Holly getting ready to punt for the fourth time today. Henley deep for UCLA. Holly gets it on. Henley falls down. And it is down by Arizona at the 42-yard line. Just a 32-yard punt by Brett Holliday. 522 remaining in this Pac-10 opener between UCLA and Arizona. The Bruins leading by seven. <laughs> They're working on the quarterback, Bobby Waters. So right thumb in here, that's the problem. Is that, uh, that's the reason he wasn't in there that last series. He may have hyperextended that thumb or had it jammed on him. 31-24 in favor of UCLA. First and 10 for the Bruins at their own 42-yard line. Split backs behind Aikman. Green gets the call. And he is hit and dropped by Beasley and Kevin Singleton. Now here's the game plan for the Bruins. Just a little over five minutes to go in the ball game. They have the ball in their own 42-yard line. They want to take some time. They've got good field position. Take some time, move the ball down the field. The main thing you want to do is keep that clock running and take time off the clock. Goes on the other hand. You're going to stop them here, slow them down, get the ball back over on the clock. Second and 10 for the Bruins. Green, the long remaining back. He gets the pitch. Now he's tripped up at the 41-yard line. Super job by Boomer Gibson on that last play. Fought off a blocker, came across over the top, through the blocker, and knocked the runner down. Nice job by Boomer Gibson. His real first name, if you're wondering, is Francis. That's why they really call him Boomer. That's right. Had a great game last year against the Bruins with 12 tackles, three sacks. Orange County product. 
he had to have corrective shoulder surgery following the Aloha Bowl. He is an outstanding football player. He's one of the captains for this ball game. Also, what Arizona does is they have game captains. They don't have captains for the entire course of the season. They will elect game captains, and then at the end of the year in their banquet, they will have what they call their permanent captain selections. If you're wondering about Arizona's other quarterback, Craig Bergman, he quit the team not long ago. He didn't feel he was getting a fair shake, and he said, adios. Well, you have to understand where Bergman's coming from now. I'm, I've seen that he has to be six foot seven. He's really not much of an option quarterback. <laughs> so I can see where he's, where he's, why he made his move. Third and ten for UCLA. Out of the shotgun. Aikman fires from place to Paco Craig. And he battles for extra yardage inside the Arizona 45 yard line. Brought down by James DeBow and Chuck Cecil. 14 yards on the play. Smart play getting Paco Craig on the left side working one on one. A good safety pass, a good low high percentage pass, and a quick slam into Paco Craig. The secondary pointing deep to bowl 38 playing exceptionally deep. The free safety Chuck Cecil has to come over and make the tackle. Another UCLA first down at the Arizona 43. They lead at 31 24 over the Wildcats. Four minutes to play in the football game. Mel Farr at fullback, Green at tailback, Mike Farr on the slot right side, and Paco Craig wide right. Gaston Green inside the 40 down at the 39 yard line. Kevin Singleton finally brought him down. Ten of his last 11 games, Green has gone over the century mark. Came into the ball game needing 253 to pass Wendell Tyler and move up into the number two slot. Well on his way, another, like you said, another good, good ball game for him. Justin. Second and six for the Bruins. Balls on the Arizona 39 yard line. Hardbuckle in motion. Green again. And he gets down to the 33 yard line. Jerry Beasley. Hit him low, and Boomer Gibson hit him high. And we've got a timeout called by Arizona. That will stop the clock at 3.04 remaining. And UCLA has another first down at the Arizona 33-yard line. Dick Dick Tomey has much to be disappointed about if, in fact, they can't get the ball back and, and go downfield to uh, score a tying touchdown. That's Kevin Singleton who was shaken up on that last play. They helped him out to the sideline. Maybe the shoulder problem. He's really got a hole in that. Boy, what, he looks like he's really in pain, and I'm sure he is. <laughs> Tom Basie into the ball game for Arizona. Melfar gets the handoff, and Arizona is not fooled at all. He ran into Reggie Gaddis, Dana Wells, and Tom Basie. You see they're doing a smart thing right here. They took over the possession of the ball with 5.06 left to go, and it's now down to 2 minutes and 30 seconds, so they're doing what they want. On the other hand, Arizona is not doing what they would like to have happen, which is to stop them and get the ball on the turnover. Bruins have it, second and 11 at the Arizona 34-yard line. A little over two minutes to play. Gaston Green trying to get outside, and he does. He's inside the 30-yard line, out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Chuck Cecil and Blake Custer in on the stop for Arizona. <laughs> Well, the one thing that Gasson did not want to do on that play was to go out of bounds. If he had it to do over again, I'm sure he realized that he would want to stay in bounds to keep that clock running. Third and four from the Arizona 27-yard line. Blake and Anderson wide right. Off play action. Aiken firing for far and complete. Randy Kendrick covering for Arizona. Well, I think he's realizing I had him. He's going to talk to Mel Farr right there. You know, I had you, but I just couldn't get the ball out there to you. 
But Terry Downing, he says, well, let's put some points on the board, and he sends Alfredo Velasco, the end of the football game, to attempt a field goal. He puts the tee down at the 34, so it'll make it a 44-yard attempt. He's one for three today. Field goal wide. He liked it a whole bunch. I'll say, Terry Donahue, who normally doesn't show that kind of emotion, really delighted with that one. Split the uprights. One minute, 59 seconds left in this Pac-10 opener. UCLA now leading Arizona, 24 to 24. A 44-yard field goal by Alfredo Velasco gives UCLA some breathing room. A 10-point lead with just under two minutes to play. You can see it on the faces of the UCLA Bruin players on the sideline. The middle page 76, the sophomore right tackle. He's happy. The whole team is happy. They haven't started off this good this early in a long time. Maggio puts the foot into it. Reggie McGill at his own 11-yard line. Trying to find the wedge, and he gets up to the 22-23-yard line before he is dropped. Craig Davis, among other Bruins, in on the stop. And you can see the disappointment and dejection on the Arizona bench. Well, they play hard. They play very, very hard. And they're going to, going to do nothing but get better through the course of the season. And uh, they had nothing to hang their heads about, that's for sure. Ron Vito, still in at quarterback. Eldridge in motion. Vito now going to run with the football. Trying to get by Doug Klein. He gets up to the 28-yard line. Terry Toomey made the tackle for UCLA. I think Arizona wants a timeout. They do, and they get it. The clock stops showing 132. any easier for UCLA. They'll hit the road next weekend and they'll head for Palo Alto, California and take on the Stanford Cardinal. And we'll have that for you along the Prime Ticket Network at 5 in the afternoon on a Sunday, October the 4th. That should be an outstanding active football game. Such a balanced conference. Lots of good, good ball clubs as evidenced by this young Arizona team here. And I say young because of a young coaching staff. You have a young staff. It's always difficult the first year. But uh, Arizona's playing some good football. But as we said earlier, they will get better. But they have nothing to be ashamed of. Only the officials talking it over with Terry Donahue. It is Bruins leading by 10 over Arizona. One minute, 38 seconds left on the clock. Of course, Arizona, we should point out, they lost some... Very talented, skilled people offensively. Well, they lost John Horton from last year, who was their split in, and he is uh, definitely an NFL type of receiver. Did a lot of things well for them, but uh, and anyway, Adams. Yeah, Adams is a little short guy, about the five foot six, six inch tailback, who did a lot of things for him. And Alfred Jenkins, uh, one of the great athletes that they had in their ball club, who played quarterback. But uh, they've got some good people to replace them in the time. They'll, uh, they'll do very well. Kevin Singleton being attended to on the Wildcat bench. Locked into the lower right-hand corner of your screen. He's going to throw it being rushed, and he dumps it off to Art Craighouse, and he is really hit by Doug Klein. Klein was out in the flat. He read that screen pass very well. He was just sitting there waiting for Craighouse to make the reception before he hammered him. 6'2", 244-pound junior from Arvada, Colorado. And he is strong. He bench presses. 441 pounds. Well, Doug had 18 tackles coming in to today's ball game, so he's no, uh, you know, he's not chopped. Whatever, he's a pretty good linebacker. 
another timeout called with 1.26 remaining. UCLA players want the crowd to do some cheering and they oblige. College football, 1987. The timeout situation, the Bruins have three left, Arizona just one. Third and ten for the Wildcats. Neal again under pressure, and he fires it way over the head of the intended receiver, Derek Hill. Dennis Price covering for the Bruins. Derek, look at his eyes. <laughs> He shows a little pain with the eyebrows, but uh, a little bit of confusion. And he's probably quite a bit scared playing here in the Rose Bowl. Anytime a freshman comes in here and gets a chance to play in this big stadium with the history that it has, playing the UCLA Bruins, ranked right 13th in the country. Big day for the young man. Dick Tully very pleased with the way he handled the situation last week, and he did a great job according to Tully. Stands in the pocket, now he's going to run with it. And he is down at the 27 yard line. Jim Waller was there. Melvin Jackson was also in on the play. And the crowd giving the UCLA defense a well deserved round of applause. UCLA will take over with a minute 14 remaining. In excellent field position at the Arizona 26 yard line. James Primus at fullback, Brian Brown at tailback, and Brown gets the call straight up the middle inside the 25 yard line. I would think that Terry would be content right here. Terry Donahue was speaking of just to run the clock out. Of course, Arizona may stop it by trying to take it. I think they have one timeout left. That's exactly right. Arizona uses up their final timeout with one minute, three seconds left. Dick Tommy. He's a realist. He was quoted earlier in the week as saying about his football team. We're not a good football team. We have the makings of a good football team. Until we get into a game like this, and he's talking about UCLA, you never know. We're sporadic on offense. In terms of point production and sudden change and effort on defense, we have improved. Again, a big key. Negative key for the Wildcats has been the fact that they've been a minus five in the turnover department. They lost six fumbles. But the day they didn't lose any fumbles, but they had three interceptions and they all came at key parts of the ball game for them offensively. That did not help. That definitely hurt them. And uh, you don't want that to happen. You can't afford to have that happen, especially against a team as good as UCLA. Aikman gets the snap on the football. Arizona has no more timeouts. So UCLA, under head coach Terry Donahue, starting off the run for the Roses on the right foot in their packed in opener. And in the first half, it didn't look so good. At halftime, they were trailing Arizona 17 to 7, and they looked sluggish. But they've looked anything but that in the second half. Aikman again and falls on the football. And the clock ticking away as Terry Donahue begins to celebrate with his UCLA team. He's happy. That's a hard fought game out there. Nine seconds to go. Eight, seven, seven, six. So Dick Tommy crossing over to congratulate his very close friend as the final sounds in this Pac-10 opener as UCLA comes from behind to defeat 
a tough Arizona squad by a score of 34-24. So Terry Donahue knew it would be tough, and he'll take this one. Final score once again, UCLA over Arizona by 10. We'll be back to the Rose Bowl to talk about this ball game for you right after these messages. <laughs>